This is Cthulhu Dark, The Secret of Castro Negro, Part 2. Yesterday, we saw our four erstwhile investigators arriving uh, in Castro Negro in the day aboard a bus that only goes there once a week. And each of the four characters has their own reasons for being in Castro Negro. But as they're learning, there might be some connection between those things, in particular, uh, some instances of people gone missing. I don't think the players or the characters have not like explicitly shared what they're doing yet with anyone, but but there's a lot of like hinting about like, oh, you might be here looking for a thing that I'm looking for, connected to a thing I'm looking for. And so we're starting to make those connections. Um, the characters began their initial investigation in town, kind of looking at different places, following up on a couple of leads that they had, that they got from Silver City. And there are still more things in Silver City leads to follow up on as far as that goes. And you've also got a few things uh, here in Castro Negro that you can follow up on. There is the issue of this strange bell tower at the chapel. There is this private room, which uh, Ephraim Diaz really like conspicuously like was guarding at the library. Um, there might be more to learn in the tomb, I'm not sure. Um, I'll leave that up to Millicent who seems most focused on that. We have this speakeasy called the Changeling, which might be a thing to do tonight. And uh, we have, we've seen some recurring motifs, um, like physical characteristics, surnames are really important in this scenario, who has what surname. Uh, those are all some interesting things to be aware of. Um, it is early evening. Everyone but Millicent is downstairs enjoying skirt steak and or broth served by a silent cook overseen by Juan Herrera, proprietor of the Herrera Hotel. Millicent is upstairs having a crisis, which we'll follow up on in a moment. Before we dive in too deep into the role play, I think it's worth checking in on everyone's insight scores and where they stand. Norbert Church is still doing okay at one. Father Samuel has two. Millicent has three. And James Harrow has two. And with all that said, let's pick up at dinner downstairs in the little dining room. Juan comes down toward the three of you are eating. He says, so, Am I right or am I right? It's delicious, yes? Uh, it is certainly uh, an ample amount of steak to chew. <laughs> and I am, yes, it's lovely. Yeah, my compliments to your chef. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I'm going to be turning in early for the night, but if you need anything, do let me know. And if you're looking for something to do to while away the evening hours, might I suggest our local um, saloon, uh, so to speak, the Changeling, which is just down the street. Thank you. Very well. Yes. <clears throat> Enjoy your night, gentlemen. Father and Samuel, like, pulls up his, like, napkin and bleh, puts another glob of grisly fat that he was just kind of chewing there back in the napkin and hides it under the table again. It is it is quite tender that they they he mentioned wanting to use all all parts of the animal and, and not wasting it, which I understand, but but usually uh, one trims the fat a little more. I suppose that when you are uh, this rural of a community, you tend to just incorporate all parts of a thing and see waste in even the little and unpleasant aspects. But again, not one to judge. And and not I would not wish to offend uh, local customs I'm not aware of, so I wouldn't want him to see that we are not enjoying the meal, of course. Of course. Uh, Mr. Church, are you finding uh, any difficulties? Do, do you need assistance eating? It's tomato soup. It's, oh, fantastic. It's rather easy for me to eat, and there's plenty of it, should your meat not be to your liking. Well, I actually... That actually sounds fantastic. Um, I will absolutely get in on some tomato soup. Shortly after this, you hear someone come into the dining room and 
you may turn to see a man dressed in sheriff's department khakis. He is tall, though certainly not as tall as some of the Diaz's you've met. Dark brown eyes, kind of salt and pepper hair. Looks strong and healthy, a little punchy around the middle, I suppose, on account of age. He tips his hat at you all and says, Good evening, gentlemen, father. Good I'm, evening. Sh- I'm Sheriff Fred Garcia, and, well, we don't get many people roll into town very often, and so I thought I'd just stop by and see how Castro Negro was treating you so far. That well, huh? <laughs> yeah, indeed. A mouthful at the wrong moment. Quite, quite generous portions at this hotel, more than I would have expected. Fantastic value, the Herrera Hotel. Of course, I suppose it's a bit of a supply and demand issue. I mean, the demand not being very high, the price of the supply has to go down, I guess. Sir, to Norbert. You enjoying that, uh, what is that there? Some kind of gazpacho? Norbert will stand up and um, dip, dip his head towards the sheriff and even offer a hand. Mm. And he shakes your hand and says, <clears throat> So, we, um, oh, go ahead. But perhaps you'd be willing to join us. It seems no. that all of us might want to bend your ear. We've come looking for people who've gone missing in your fine town. Missing? Well, I'm quite certain I don't know anything about that, but that does answer my question, which is what brings you out this way? Did you all come together? Don't no. take this the wrong way, but you seem like something of a motley crew, if so. Indeed, a motley crew we are, for this is not, uh, uh, well, this is a sheer coincidence. The four of us, uh, prior to today, had never met one another before. Uh, we huh. are all coming to Castro Negro sing similar, uh, t- 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 for a similar purpose, it would seem, but with uh, different uh, directions that we are being pointed in. It's most fortuitous, one might say. Praise be. Well, <clears throat> no, I wish I could stay, but I can't. Uh, I gather there was a young woman with you as well. Where is she? Let's check in on that young woman, shall we? <laughs> that young woman who is just listening to something snuffling at her door, breathing funnily, lurking. It goes away, Millicent. You don't hear it, at least. What do you do? Uh, well, a quick question first. From where I was at, uh, I was like pressed against the the back wall where the window should be. Mm. Could I see what was looking through the keyhole? No, that was something purely okay. for our cool. edification. Unless you want to go Got look. It. Well, uh, yeah, I would say that uh, after she hears the or doesn't hear the uh, the heaving anymore, uh, she'll very cautiously uh, approach the door. Does she still see a shadow underneath uh, the the split? No. Okay. Then yeah, she will. Uh, Put press her ear against the door to make sure that there's nothing there, and then when she, when she feels safe and sure that there's no more presence behind it, she'll uh, very carefully open it up a crack. You know, there's no one at a glance out in the hall, but do you look around more, or what do you do? I think when she sees that there's no one at a glance, she picks up the book and she goes marching downstairs. And mm-hmm. before they see her, they would hear her calling out, "Mr. Herrera." He's already gone to bed. What a oh, she, you all will she, hear her calling. Know that. Yeah, but the three of you will hear her calling. What do you do? Oh, uh, Miss Reed, uh, I'm, uh, I'm afraid our host has uh, gone in for the night. Is something the matter? Where is he? I would assume in his lodging. Miss Reed, I'm Sheriff Fred Garcia. You look a little startled by something. Are you quite Sheriff, all right? Uh, very good to see you. There was someone outside of my room uh, spying on me, trying to get in. Does your room have a window? No, but they were outside my door. 
Well, if you don't, have, if your room doesn't have a window, you should be perfectly safe. Now then, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, wait. I just, I, I feel like that's. Uh, is there something uh, the matter with having a window in one's room? Well, you just never know what could blow in. Even if the window were closed. <laughs> I'm well, glad to see that Sheriff, oh, it was outside of my door, not outside of my non-window. Now, if you'll excuse me, if you're not going to be any help, uh, Mr. Herrera. And there's no response for, uh, from Lupe or Mr. Herrera, both of whom yeah. have turned in. Fred Sheriff. says, the sheriff, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You said perfectly safe, perfectly safe from what? It sounds like you have had some difficulties. Perhaps you would mind explaining that to my companions. Go ahead and make the roll at this point, since you all have him kind of cornered. Uh, let's do the, what's the roll called? Investigation, I think. Um, investigating, yeah. I think this is probably just a d6 for you, right? Or one die. A three. He says, <clears throat> yeah, sometimes there's trouble around here, like any small town. You have people who get restless because there's nothing to do. There's no way of whiling away the endless hours. Sometimes people go poking around, peeking into windows of folks and people from outside of town would be of most interest. Now I should point out that the windows, there's no ledging outside, there's no ledge outside the windows, so it'd be very strange to on a second story window to be peeking in, but this is I just mean to say that well. Sometimes people get a little worked up and agitated in Castro Negro on account of new folks, new folks asking questions, new folks poking around. You just ought to be careful, is all I'm saying. Well, it is much the same, even in places like Silver City, where, uh, albeit not as small as a community, we tend to be somewhat insular. And when we have out-of-towners coming in, I'm definitely guilty of occasionally harboring some suspicion of intentions. I, I can hardly fault the restless folk of Castro Negro for being a little curious. Um, but all the same, uh, I will keep that in mind. He says, let me give you one little tip before I go. Mm. Stay away. From the barn. Shepherd's Barn, they call it. Best to avoid that part of that part of town. And what is it about the barn that we should be wary of? He just tips his hat. You all have a good evening now. And moseys on out. I'm sorry for your troubles, ma'am. I feel safer already. Yes, the stay has been remarkable so far. Are we, like, alone now, as far as we know? It's like, just there's... the four of you, as far as you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, Father Samuel kind of, like, lowers his voice, a, a, like, a little bit, just out of uh, out of uh, caution, re re recalling earlier today when he felt like he was being watched. Um, he said, well, Miss Reed, I am rather glad you, you've joined us at this time. Uh, uh, Mr. Church and I were speaking a bit before coming here. Uh, we didn't yet have an opportunity to confer with you and Mr. Harrow about it. It would seem that, indeed, the four of us are all here in Castro Negro with some sort of uh, at least similar purpose. I don't know necessarily what your intentions are, Miss Reed, but at least for the three of us, we all have people that we are looking for in this town. Different people, but it is a remarkable coincidence. And... Well, this conversation, I suppose, is further support of this claim, but as I was saying to Mr. Church, I feel like something is not quite right. Something feels 
very wrong. I've been Do you unsettled. Think? <laughs> yeah. I've yeah, been very Millicent, unsettled. <laughs> Millicent is just standing there listening to him, but she's her back has been uh, towards him. She was just sort of watching the sheriff go glaring at him. But when he's finally gone, when Sam Samuel finishes, she turns and says, I'm not here looking for anybody. I'm looking for something. I'm not sure what, but oh, this unsettling feeling is not unique to you. I've felt it too. Perhaps, she, oh, go, by all means, continue. It, she looks down and sees the big sort of, is it like a sort of like small cauldron of of, of hot meat or something? <laughs> yeah, or something, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was, yeah. <laughs> Like a small, like a like one of those cast iron hot plates. Um, and yeah, she's like a kamal of, or something. Yeah. yeah, and she winces at it, and uh, when she does, she uh, holds the book to her chest. Uh, there have been uh, there have been a series of mutilations uh, out here uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, cattle mutilations, uh, but there's something else. Uh, her, the Herreras, uh, as, we, as we know that there are two main families here in the city, the, the, in the town rather, the Diaz's and the Herreras, but I found this and she puts the book down in front of uh, Father Samuel. Uh, it's a book by uh, uh, an ancestor of some sort of, of the town, uh, mm. Gabriela Herrera. You have uh, forgotten one family uh, uh, of note would be the, there's also the Vilela Pereiras, and actually that uh, pertains to why I'm here, but I, the time for that. Uh, yes, this book, yes, all right, uh, an ancestor, but by all means, continue. Millicent gets a little, uh, she, there, she, gets a, like, she gets a little bit irritated by being interrupted like that, and she just sort of flips over to the pa passage, so the, the page that she had uh, earlier of the, like, illustration of the brutally flayed and devoured man. Yeah, the I... book is called On the Subject of Meat. Father Samuel's kind of like, look, his like brow furrows and kind of creases, uh, he presses his lips together. His eyes unconsciously flick down to his like dinner um, and then just kind of says, I... I think I'll go for more of that tomato soup, if you don't mind, Mr. Church. Incredibly to... rich, surprisingly meaty red broth, that tomato soup. <laughs> I, I, if no one else has, I think Norbert would have risen at some point during this uh, and, and pulled out a chair for Millicent to sit with us rather than mm -hmm. having her stand the entire time. We just would have seen him proper. I would like for Father Samuel, James, and Norbert oh to please make the insight roll. Oh, jeez. Okay. Three. It is higher than my current insight. Roll the five. Yours is going up as well, James. How'd you do, Norbert? Norbert's at a one. You've probably seen some shit, Norbert. That doesn't surprise me. Every day in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that too, yeah. Father Samuel, James, how are you feeling? You don't know for sure that you just ate a no. person, but... Quite no. sickened. Yeah, yeah, like, it's very, very sickening. and churns my stomach. I think James starts by trying to ra rationalize it and say, um, Miss Reed, I'm surprised I didn't see books like this at the library. This must be some sort of avant-garde surrealist... And, and then he just trails off and he's remembering the just nauseating uh, chewing sounds and strangeness from Juan earlier and is oh. at a loss for words. <clears throat> I didn't find this at a library. Well, not an academic one. It There's a, uh, a shop in town called The Tomb. Uh, it's a, a, a collection of antiquities and relics uh, pertaining to the esoteric uh, very unusual to find in a town like this. In the owner, though. I'm sorry. You you said you all were here trying to find people. Uh, who were you trying to find? Why yes, were they I, here? I was about to ask actually that question. I feel perhaps we should exchange 
Uh, note, I hate to sound like I'm prying into your own personal lives, but given this disturbing, unsettling evening, uh, perhaps we should be on the same page as to our individual investigations, if you will. I myself, um, I am, as mentioned, I uh, am a priest of uh, St. Vincent's in Silver City. I was counseling a young man, a troubled young boy, um, uh, had uh, uh, erratic behavior, problems with drugs and alcohol, and I was providing him some counseling, and um, he disappeared a few days ago, and... His family was from Castro Negro. He had mentioned a desire to stay far away from his family, was intending to head uh, further north in the state. And from what I hear, an uncle of his collected his belongings from the hotel he was staying at. That was as good of a lead as I had as any. I felt some duty to him as his counselor to at least check after his well-being and make sure there was no... Well... He was a, he, I may consider him young, but he was enough of an adult to have a say in where he should be able to go, his family. Well, <clears throat> I was worried for him. That is why I'm here. I'm looking for someone as well myself. My professor, uh, Professor Godfrey, was is a bit of a mentor, and he he's a bit eccentric, um, but he has a unique point of view. He has has some progressive ideas, and and I had hoped to talk with him more about his research. But the problem is, he tends to um, get a little bit upset with new theories of his, and uh, he was quite interested in this the history of this town which i now see the the deepness the richness of the lore um such a complex history and uh, no doubt a place of a uh, place to dig deep but i had not heard from him in weeks and all i knew was that he was coming to castro negro uh he's in his last notes um he seemed to have reached out and made some attempts to contact Folks here, I understand why he didn't hear back. So my best guess is that he just went off on his own, and I, I'm a bit at a bit of a loss uh, to hear that no one seems to have heard from him or seen him here. Things are not quite adding up. For my part, my particular friend David Lane, who served with me in France, has gone missing some weeks ago and I traveled to Silver City, the last address his parents had, and found there a, a paperback that he had been reading, he had left an envelope as a bookmark with the name of Father Alfonso at the chapel here in Castanego on it. Myself and Father Samuel yesterday went to the chapel to visit the father who shared with us that he did know David and had been working with him on similar historical explorations. Perhaps he knew your professor Godfrey as well, James. Uh, and Father Samuel did not hear, but Alfonso whispered to me that I should look in the barn, which now seems even more suspect and cryptic with the sheriff's warnings. And then, like, all eyes turn to Millicent, I imagine, as we all just kind of look at her. I just imagine Leslie Ann Warren saying, I'm also being blackmailed. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was <laughs> literally, Except I yeah. did, but I'm being blackmailed more. <laughs> 100%. This felt like the clue dinner. Yeah, it really did. Yeah. I'm determined to enjoy myself. Um, no, uh, Millicent standing there still. I don't think she took the chair that uh, Norbert offered her, but sort of just standing there in front of all three of them. Well, as I mentioned, uh, cattle mutilations, it's nothing uh, personal, really. It's, it's, I'm, it's, I guess I'm somewhat similar to your Professor Godfrey. I'm, I'm curious. I, 
I pursue the unknown and uh, I, I know my research uh, pointed me here. Uh, there was obviously rumors of uh, extraterrestrial life, uh, satanic rituals, but but that doesn't feel like what's that doesn't feel like that's what's happening here. It feels something that's completely unfamiliar to me, something heavy. It's an energy uh, I haven't felt before. I must say, I do observe a rather interesting uh, intersection of uh, of points. Uh, Mr. Harrow, this professor of yours, you said he was looking into some um, some Who's... some local history. History, but especially uh, local myths and uh, myths of the, the tribes who lived here before. And uh, yeah, he had some yes. theories of mythology and, and such. And this chapel uh, where the Father Alonso was, uh, the, 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 the bell tower is made from supposedly an older stone that was here first. Uh, uh, it's perhaps that is uh, uh, playing into... Um, uh, uh, some of the things that have been mentioned uh, by uh, you, Miss Reed, uh, the these uh, um, old uh, uh, rumors of the town's history. Perhaps it seems to center around uh, uh, the, uh, the old old tribes. Perhaps, uh, although the the, fa the father there did say that no local indigenous peoples have claimed those ruins as their own. Um, perhaps this uh, this old structure plays into multiple different of our uh angles i suppose <laughs> just Perhaps. a passing observation yes i i still feel uneasy though i feel like i at least want to talk to jorge again maybe he knows something else something more relevant uh, I, I, we feel like we have a bunch of pieces here nothing is making sense though the whole picture is still cloudy mm. Well, given that I've rather lost my appetite at the moment, what time is it outside? Uh, it's pro it's still probably fairly early in the evening, okay. like seven o'clock. Was I like was... past dusk, or mm. uh, yeah, I think the sun is pretty well down at this point. Okay. I did wish to inquire at the tobacco shop. I'm not sure if they're open, but I have a few words I'd like to speak with the owner. I um was going to head over there. Any of you are welcome to join me, but I wanted to make that uh, at least some headway on my personal investigations before I felt the need to stay in for the evening. So, Father think... Samuel, heading to this tobacco shop, where are you going to go, Norbert? I think, given the sheriff's warning that we shouldn't separate, or at least should only travel in pairs... Sounds sensible, yes. Would any of you accompany me to, uh, accompany me to the changeling? If you don't mind me taking a book along, I suppose I could. I, I would be a bit curious to hear more about your area of expertise, Miss Reed. It sounds intriguing, and I, I only wish that Professor Godfrey was here to, to speak with you as well. Well, you should hope that we should find him soon, then. I should join you then, Father. Very well. Uh, I don't suppose you smoke, Mr. Church, because I do not. And I need a reason to be visiting this tobacco shop that might be a bit more conversational than directly approaching the subject. <laughs> I do not smoke, but I can certainly play up whatever you need me to to sell the rules. Uh -huh. May I suggest the four of us meet back here at a certain time so that none of us are alarmed if we are missing. The two shortest together, and then the next two shortest together. <laughs> it's suggest, clue all the way down. I suggest the two shortest go to the changeling, and so, <laughs> so on and so forth. Um, good. Uh, James and Millicent heading up to the changeling. I mean, I mean, truly, the four of you are kind of stepping out into the street in front of the hotel and splitting off and going in different directions, right? Let's start with the changeling. May I uh, just jump in here for a minute? Um, I, I'm, uh, I, I have assumed all the way along, if it's okay, that Norbert would have some uh, war trophies in his rucksack okay. and might return to his hotel room to grab his broom-handled Mauser that he can stuff into his peacoat and his trench knife. Sure. Just in case, 
just in case he needs it. You never it's know. Probably... Yeah. That sounds good to me. Um, the Changeling. The local tavern. Constructed of old adobe, like most of the buildings here. Looks very old. Probably, you know, from Old West times or maybe even older. It has one story containing the bar. 12 tables, a back room, probably a cellar where they keep the drinks cold. The sign indicates that it's a private club, uh, but you, um, but uh, there's a little note that uh, inquire with barman about memberships. And indeed you see the barman. He is tall with black hair, high cheekbones, and those bright green eyes. He's kind of rubbing down the bar when you walk in. There aren't many people here right now. In one table, you actually do see Jorge, though he doesn't have his lady friend with him. And he's quite passed out, drunk already at the table. At another table, you see a short old man with unkempt brown hair and unshaven face, kind of throwing him back. Millicent, what do you do? Seeing Jorge slumped over in his chair, she looks to Mr. Harrow and says, uh, I'm, I'm going to go speak with him or attempt to anyway. Uh, I won't be a moment, hopefully. And she'll just dip off and go to his table. James? Uh, he will look for a unassuming corner of the bar or table to sit. Um, he will uh, ask the bartender. Um, we were we were recommended your establishment by, uh, by Wong at the hotel. And uh, just wondering if you uh, still have any fresh coffee at this time of night. Yeah, I could brew you a pot. If coffee is all you want, then there'll be no issue with that. If you want something a little stronger, that will require you to buy a membership, I'm afraid. Well, I'll also order a uh, point to uh, Millicent, whatever, whatever the lady wishes. Uh, mm. He calls over. What are you having to drink tonight, ma'am? She looks over, and at first it's just sort of casual, like she's about to say her drink order, but when she sees his eyes, she freezes a bit and says, nothing, nothing for me, thank you. Hmm. Millicent, Jorge is kind of muttering, mumbling in his sleep a little bit. He's alive, <laughs> just passed out. What do you do? She gets into the opposite chair across from him and like leans in calling out his name, Jorge, Jorge. And then finally, when he's not responsive, she starts to tap him on the cheek a bit to try and wake him up. He's like, oh, oh, I, I told you I have to go tomorrow. I've got no choice. I got to go back. What do you mean you have no choice? I can't stay with you. Very, I've got to go back. I got to get out of here. I got to go back. Oh, Jorge, Jorge. It, I, I'm my, I'm Millicent Reed. I was on your on the on your bus this morning. Make a investigation roll. See how it goes. If you learn anything of import here, is it just one dice, or can I? Can I... Can I, I justify mean, my mediumship? <laughs> I mean, you can make a case for your being a medium helping you here. I'm not sure how, but I'm open to your pitches. Yeah, I don't have anything right now. One die it is. Five. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. James, the proprietor brings your coffee. It says... <clears throat> it's not too hot. Sorry about that. It's all right. Let me know if you need anything else. Appreciate it. Goes over to the bar. What do you do? 
I am, you know, uh, I think I take out a book I was reading, um, same one I was reading on the bus, but I also take out a small journal and I'm taking notes, um, trying to just collect my thoughts. Um, one mentioned that someone had called ahead, uh, for, you know, for the professor. Um, doesn't make sense. Uh, just, just recapping things that happened yesterday. Um, unusual to have such a rich library, but but even more unusual books that weren't in the library, the, the book on meat. And uh, yeah, just trying to gather my thoughts and then notes, personal notes, remember to ask, you know, the other travelers about, about their interests of um, mediumship, Jung's theories on mediumship, tapping into the collective unconscious, <laughs> things like that. That other fellow who's at his other ta at the other table, this kind of unshaven guy, he's also quite drunk. He's probably the town drunk. It looks like it anyway. He kind of like looks over at you and he says, you look like a college boy. Uh, yes, I, I do study at the University of New Mexico. I do study at the University of New Mexico. Oh, big smart college man out here in Castro Negro doing it's, research uh, yes it's it's quite a quite a special town you you have here oh it's a very special town we have here who wouldn't want to come out here I mean you got you know this fine establishment and I mean that Gilbert call it to the barman Gilbert just gives him an impatient shake and goes back to doing what he's doing you got the lovely herrera hotel got a church got a bunch of people with green eyes i'm sure you've seen them green eyes no offense gilbert does gilbert have green eyes he does oh yeah oh, okay yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, Castro Negro. Used to be called Agua Blanca. Did you know that? I don't know if I did. I starts writing that down. <laughs> Just playing it straight off to see if, if he gets bored. Yeah, and uh, this drunk guy, he kind of like stumbles over to your table. He just joins yeah. you at your table. He yeah. says, so what are you here researching? Uh, well, local, uh, local myths it's just a survey on uh, you, you seem like a storyteller do you have any <laughs> i'm a storyteller my goodness i may have some stories though well, um i'm only drinking coffee myself but uh if you have any that would you think would be interesting for me to include my records i'd be happy to to get your next drink mm-hmm um yeah, make the make the roll. See what sure. he comes up with. I just rolled one. Ah, uh, indeed. <laughs> he says, <clears throat> "So, what does your research tell you about sacrifices?" And then he gets up and. He looks like he has more to say, but you only got a one on your roll. If you want to add an insight die and try to get more, you can certainly do that. Yeah, let's do it. So I re-roll with a dark die. Yeah, yeah, a, a, a regular die and an insight die, we say. Great. Uh, four on the, on the dark die. Okay, so because your insight die is higher, it will trigger an insight roll in a moment, but Four is a lot better. <laughs> um, so we'll come back to this. Let's check with Father Samuel and Norbert. You have a little bit more of a walk. I think as you are going down the little um, southerly street there, 13th Avenue, apparently, um, you'll walk by the library on the corner and you'll just see Ephraim Diaz locking up for the night. And he gives you a nervous but nervous glance and acknowledgement nods and kind of goes off 
and then you can continue on your way down the tobacco shop. Before we can continue, can Norbert ask him what time they reopen? He says, oh, oh, uh, we, we've actually been closed for a little while. I was just here doing some, uh, you know, some, some off the clock research, we'll say. Uh, but we'll be open again tomorrow uh, around 10. But you have to catch the bus before then, I'm sure. Uh, it depends if our uh, inquiries go as planned. Mm, yes, well, uh, good evening to you. And he lopes off. The tobacco uh, shop. Oh, go ahead. Yes, as Samuel's just say outside the shop. Just, uh, you should know that the the owner of the shop, Philip, um, is the uncle of the young man I'm looking for. The father did warn against bringing up family drama. I'm going to try and be tactful about it, but there is a chance he might be rather rude. Let's just be aware of that. You need me to make a distraction, Father. It's one of the few things I'm very good at is drawing unwanted attention. I, I'm afraid that if you provided a distraction, I'm not sure what opportunity I would seize. Uh, but uh, perhaps... Just, just mm. give me a signal and I'll pretend to lose my face covering. I under understood. All this planning is for naught because... <laughs> The tobacco shop is closed when you get there. Ah. <laughs> but I will tell you what you see in the window, though. Yes. The Valela Pereira Tobacco Shop is the name of it. Proprietor, Philip Valela Pereira, who you know, Father Samuel, to be the uncle of Joaquin Valela Pereira. The window um, is empty, except for five small jade green statuettes depicting figures, twisted figures, tentacled figures, very strange. Five of them just lined up in a row in the window. Very odd. What do you do? Hmm. Kind of like look in the window. Is it like, can I make out anything inside like the tobacco shop with the lights out? Like any? Make, uh, make the roll, let's see. Sure. Oh, a die. <laughs> One. I don't feel like risking my mind at the moment. So. With the one, I will tell you that it appears to be completely empty and dark. Oh, bother. That was the one actual... Mm. What if we nice. knock really loudly? Does this look like the kind of building that someone lives above or like just like a, like a shop? Uh, it's just a single story and um, there's no, yeah, no immediate evidence of where anyone might be. I'm just thinking the librarian was working late. Yeah, the, perhaps. The, the equal chance someone else is there late. It's worth a shot. Um, I'll knock loudly on the front door of the shop. Bang for a while. There's no, there's no answer. <sighs> well, frankly, Mr. Church, I, I don't particularly wish to, to overstay here in Castronegro, and I would like to catch that bus tomorrow. But, uh, well, this was my one lead, and save for finding the address of Mr. Valela Pereira, I find Mr. myself B &E. at a loss. <laughs> well, yes, and the, <laughs> the father is thinking in the back of his head, like, well, I could break in, but no, 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 that's not. <laughs> He's definitely can we, but, can we easily tell uh, what the little um, figurines are made of? Is it some sort of stone or glass? It or... does seem to be some kind of stone, yeah, but it's polished. Yeah. Strange that they're so prominently displayed in a tobacco shop. Do they look to yeah. be for sale, or is it more yeah. of an art display? Just more of a... It's not even... They're not even displayed... Oh, oh, someone's right yeah, They're not even displayed artfully. They're just, like, just plunked along the bottom baseboard of the window display. <laughs> There's not... Any no care has been taken. Very strange. Yes. Yes, Father. I will say Father Samuel definitely has like the look of like he really wants to get inside that shop, but is definitely conflicted about the thought of breaking into uh, a building. He just kind of like looks conflicted. <laughs> 
while you're all considering what to do, I'm going to check back in with Millicent Reed. Millicent, you got a five. That's a really good role. Questioning a, a Jorge who's, who's nearly passed out, barely lucid, thinks he's talking to presumably his girlfriend. It's unclear. Um, what sorts of things are you trying to get out of him? What do you want to know? How do you ask him? What do you ask him? So he's saying he can't go back until to, he has to go back. He can't, he can't stay. Right. Um, so I think that, I think that she would be sort of pressing him about maybe his girlfriend and about uh, what he knows about her in this town. Cause I think she's also noticed that she's not seen any women in the town. She didn't see Lupe. She heard of Lupe, but she didn't see her. Mm -hmm. So I think that she's sort of interested in this fact that maybe he has a girlfriend here and that's the only woman that she's heard about other than Lupe. He's kind of muttering for a bit. He becomes lucid enough to actually open his eyes and look at you. And you see now that his eyes are wet with tears. And he says, they took her. They finally took her. We did. They did. They took her. I tried to get her to leave. Every week, I tried to convince her to come back with me to Silver City. And she always you say said why she wanted to stay. She says she has obligations. I guess that's all over now. Oh, I'm so sorry. But who who is they? Who who were these people that took her? The people in this town. This town. Everything you see, everything on the surface, is just a facade. The real Castro Negro is underground. It's the secret they don't want getting out. And they finally took her. And he just becomes inconsolable, lost in sobbing, and eventually will pass out. Yeah, she just sort of gently presses her hand to his shoulder and lets him go. But uh, when she does, she looks over and sees James. And I assume this man who he was talking with is sort of like getting up and like in his face? Or is he really he's actually face? sitting with him, yeah. Oh, okay, got it. He introduces himself to you, James, as uh, he's also James, James Whitlock, if you have that in common. And he kind of looks at you and he says, sacrifices. The old guys from Castro Negro, they always do them sacrifices. There's still lights and dancing in the hills, even after all these years. And if you go up them hills on the wrong night, you can hear awful yelling and screaming. And the screaming ain't just kids having fun. I seen them. And I see what comes with them. And what comes with them out to Shepherd's Barn. At this point, Gilbert Diaz says, that's enough, James. And James says, no, I seen it. No one believes me. No one cares. Or they just want me to shut up. But you climb up them foothill, them foothills up to Shepherd Barn and you see what you think then. Or maybe you go find the old Diaz vault. <laughs> then you'll know that it ain't just the drink talking. I've seen things. He gets up. 
And he says, keep your drink. You'll need it. Let's take a five minute break. Back in front of the tobacco shop, Father Samuel, Norbert Church. What are you doing? Father kind of like wrings his hands a little bit and just kind of looks at Norbert and says, oh, well, uh, perhaps we should uh, inquire with another local, though I'd I feel like we are wasting time. Damn it all. I wish I wasn't so unsettled by this affair. I'm sorry I couldn't be of better help, Father. Perhaps we could go around the back of the shop and see if the owner is inside. I, I mean, we knocked, but, uh, but perhaps, yes, uh, to, to double check. Yes, I mean, we've come all of this way. And and I would hate to have an oversight just because I've forgotten to check around the back. Yes. All right, Norbert uh, makes his way around the back. As you're making your way around the back, I will tell you that the bell tower of the chapel is illuminated tonight. It's really interesting because it's a bell tower, but there's no bell. And it's not even like an open area. The top of the bell tower just has like very thin slit windows almost like a medieval arrow you know firing you know slot but you can see light coming from those little narrow slots you go around to the back of the tobacco shop there's a little side alley and there is a back exit or entrance i suppose some little little stoop what do you do try the door it's locked. Uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll knock. <laughs> no <Yes>. answers. <laughs> well, we can't say we didn't check. Although I... <sighs> Mr. Church, I do confide in you that this proprietor, Philip Villela Pereira, might be responsible for the unlawful kidnapping of his nephew to return him to his town. On the one hand, I do not feel it at all appropriate for a man of the cloth, as it were, to suggest anything unlawful. But then again, I do care after the, the people underneath my charge, as it were. Perhaps we can attempt a more direct means of entrance. The sheriff did say that outsiders were to be met with suspicion. And I'll pull the trench knife from inside of my peacoat and begin jamming it between the door frame and the door. Father yeah. Samuel, like, looks away. <laughs> uh, take a two-die roll to see... Um... Uh, if you're going to break in successfully or not, I'm actually going to roll against you here. So, because I think it would be fun to see you fail or to attract unwanted attention as it were. And so basically I roll, I roll a single die. And if my die is higher than your highest die, then, uh, then you fail. So my role is a, my roll's a two and you got two fives. So you're good. You're going to get in clean, free and clear. Go ahead and just give me the scene of the two of you sneaking in through the back. <laughs> uh, Norbert, uh, not, clearly not the first time he's done something like this. Uh, deftly slips the trench knife in between the door and the door jam casing and is able to slip the lock up pretty easily and uh, slide the door open fairly quietly and escort the father inside. The tobacco shop yes. is essentially two halves. There's the back area, small, compared to the front area where there's just like a little office and a desk and you'll see those things as you go in through the back. 
And is there you, any tobacco in the tobacco? Yes, <laughs> there actually is a lot. Yeah, you smell the tobacco. You're hit with the smell of tobacco, especially if you cross the threshold from the back to the front of the store. Um, it's very dark. There is a little bit of like ambient street light coming in through the front window. Um, what do you do? Uh, uh, Father Samuel will uh, begin. He's mostly just like looking around, but I think um, if there's like, um, is there like a, an office in the shop or is it just kind of like. Yeah, you come the... in through the office. Yeah, there's okay, like, a gotcha. little, like a little desk. Yeah, he, and a... he pays more attention to the office because um, he's kind of like looking for any indication of Joaquin's like anything that might pertain to Joaquin at all. Um, <laughs> we get in too far though norma yeah. would be careful enough to want to make sure there's nobody else inside mm. hiding from our, our knocking on the outside so it's sort of just you know, a quick cursory look around to make sure that there's no one about in the shadows cursory glance no okay. all right now we can begin poking around yes i want to poke around after joaquin's mm -hmm. anything probably you through philip's office belongings uh roll one die Okay. That's a six. Oh, no. <laughs> that makes sense, but oh, no. How interesting. Your foot catches on the end of a small rug in the office and accidentally kicks it over or away to reveal a hatch in the floor. The hatch is not locked, though there is a D-ring to put a padlock, but there isn't currently one. You can hear sounds coming from beneath this trap door. Some kind of movement, some kind of shuffling. Though you have to get, you'd have to put your ear down closer to it to get a better sense of what you're hearing down there, Father Samuel. I mean, I think against all logic to the contrary, he does kneel down and press his ear against the door to strain an ear. You hear some shuffling around. It sounds pretty deep. Maybe... 20, 30 feet deep down. And, but there's definitely movement. Movement of several people, I would say, and breathing even, I would say. And then it gets very quiet. And you just hear, Badock! Paddock. Please make an insight roll. Yeah, I figured. Five. Yeah, it goes up. How are you feeling, Father Samuel? Uh, Father Samuel, when that was that, did that voice sound like it was like right up against the door when it like croaked up at me? Um, uh, you can decide. Okay, I will say that it's like yeah, for the for the horror jump scare potential, of like suddenly right there, he like 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 leaps back um and like he like cries out uh just like uh and, and like stumbles back i think he um like stumbles back into like a desk and just like knocks over like a bunch of like papers and like stuff on the desk and there's just like a loud like clatter and thud um there is like a, a perspiration on his brow he kind of like fumbles and like instinctively like reaches for the rosary inside of his coat and it's just kind of like clutching it is like white knuckling around it as he just kind of like staring eyes like a little wide at the uh the trap door he's gone a little pale meanwhile norbert i like the idea of you being kind of maybe somewhere else in the shop while this is going on maybe in the front of the shop what are you doing i would be exactly in the front of the shop scooping up those strange little um, carved oh uh, tokens the moment you touch one make an insight roll <laughs> okay oh yeah so you got a four, so you're going up to two. You feel very strange upon handling the little jade statues, which you see now are sort of depictions of like, it looks like a, it looks like a rat fucking a toad, essentially. 
with some tentacles involved as well. How do you feel though, upon touching one of these things? Um, I think the first time he touches it, where he gets that, that sense of what it looks like, he, whether he imagines it or not, he feels it move in his hand, squirm as if it's actually fucking a toad and drops it. Indeed. Oh, does him dropping it coincide exactly with the moment when? Uh, oh, probably. Yeah, yeah. Gets scared. Probably yeah. like when you touch right when Norbert's touching it is when we hear you hear the monarch. Yeah. Let's check in with Millicent and James. <laughs> Millicent and James, um, there may not be anything else to learn here at the Changeling. Uh, you've learned quite a lot, I would say. Yeah, uh, Millicent is uh, clearly uh, beside herself, uh, but she's keeping it together as best as she can. But she, when uh, the other James uh, gets up and leaves, uh, she scoots into the seat he was in and uh, leans in. James, we have to go. I was about to say the same thing. I don't think we should be here much, much longer or in this town, to be honest. No, no, we shouldn't. Uh, Jorge is far too drunk to drive the bus out of town, though. I... And then she gets an idea. And it might not be a good idea. But I think, looking back, I think she's going to maybe try and steal his keys for the bus. Nice. Um, you could do a one die roll to see if you accomplish that. Would it? Is there a way for James to help? Uh, yes, in fact, there is a uh, a help option here. Um, cooperating to cooperate, everyone who's helping rolls their die as well. Uh, so you just also roll a die, and we take the highest between them. Between them, Cthulhu Dark's very simple game. <laughs> uh, Millicent got a four, and what'd you get, James? Uh, a three. Okay, so the four four holds. That's really that's pretty good. That's about as good as we could probably expect in the scene. Uh, build the scene out for me, like, because it sounds like James, are you going to cause a distraction while Millicent lifts the keys, or what's happening here? Yeah, I'm just going to awkwardly say, like, to the bartender, "Oh, uh, the gentleman didn't actually want his drink, and I, I, I'm sorry, I only wanted coffee. I'm sure it's a great drink, but perhaps if one of your other patrons would like one, um, and just kind of unnecessarily talk through this interaction." Got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Millicent. Yeah, Millicent is sort of, you know, uh, crouching down a bit, not like full on stealth, but definitely sort of trying to keep her herself pressed closer to the wall. And when she gets up to Jorge, she can hear him snoring very loudly. You know, he's deep in his cups, but uh, she'll uh, sort of rifle through his pockets. You get the sense watching her that this is probably probably not the first time she's taken something from someone like this. Um, so she has a, a bit of uh, effectiveness as she rifles through and she she goes in, finds them, and uh, she stuffs them into her little uh, beaded purse, which I imagine has like a cobweb pattern on it. But she stuffs it in there and uh, she very carefully, like casually starts to crawl like crawl like crouch and then like stand up as she moves towards the front door and slip out james i assume you're shortly behind thereafter yeah mm -hmm. you go back out into the street and taking a look at our map you're there on garcia way the corner of garcia way diaz avenue and Villela Pereira street it's weird that they change the name of the street despite the fact that it's only divided by one uh, road um where to from here i think i i think millicent when they're out there just sort of goes to james uh what did he tell you well first of all perhaps there's somewhere more more quiet we should talk but i of course yes i mean like that he turned he didn't even want my drink he i, I think he was quite genuinely disturbed about something and uh, i'll just kind of like tap on like my notes that like i have maybe i have things i want to write or say but not out in public or whatever um james is looking a little bit shifty and, and uncomfortable at this point i think if if you're okay with that i think i'd be yeah. walking back towards the hotel sure. um because we also know that the tobacco shop is that way too sure. um but as we're walking back, uh, Millicent goes, 
something happened to Jorge's uh, lady friend. Uh, he says that she was taken, that he's been trying to convince her to leave every time he's been here, but if there's something else. He says that there's something underground, some secret. That man spoke of the barn as well. I, I was trying to just put him off by talking about folklore, but he seemed genuinely upset by things he'd seen, spoke of sacrifices. And then I think I'll just like open like the notes I've had and it just says like 200 missing babies. It said, um, there was, there was something terrible happening in this town and I'm beginning to think we're being lied to about it. I have no love lost for the other two, but I would hate it. Uh, my conscience would not agree with me if, if we just left them without at least telling them. Uh, we should find them, though. Whatever this is, uh, I don't think either of us are capable of dealing with it in the way that it needs to be dealt with. Uh, I've I've s seen things, I've traveled, but this is far beyond anything that I've ever encountered. Let's pick up with Father Samuel and Norbert. Father Samuel, you startle back, you hear this noise, you know, very, very strange situation. What do you do afterwards? Um, I think after like a moment of just like standing there, like frozen, uh, like looking at the the hatch and like ears, like he hears like the, uh, the rush of blood, his heartbeat. And he just like is seeing if there are any more sounds. And once there's like enough quiet for a moment, he's able to like peel himself off of the wall. Um, I imagine by the point he's actually able to compose himself. I don't know if Norbert intended to go see the source of all that clutter and uh, like falling that came out from his uh, collapse, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Norbert, what are you doing? Yeah, as soon as I hear uh, some sounds <laughs> coming from the office where the father was uh, and sounds uh, disturbing and, and, and uh, remarkable enough that Norbert pulls himself away from the strange little tokens and goes back to see what's happening. I'm sure that was okay. To be yeah, clear, you I, didn't keep any of the little statuettes. You just dropped the one you had. No, dropped the one I had and picked up all of them. Oh, so you do have some of them then? Oh, and if there were five of them. There were all five are back in Norbert's bag. Okay. Not that he okay, understands okay. what they mean, but he, okay. he knows enough that there's a, a mystery going on and that we have a medium among us, and he's going to hope that Millicent can direct it. Mm, yeah. Uh, when Norbert like walks in and sees the, the Father Samuel and he's like pale and and sweaty, he just like looks over and says, he like kind of like holds like a hand up like he says, Mister Church, I, I do not think that we are alone. He like kind of like points like a slightly trembling finger at the at the hatch. Is there light coming from around the edges of the hatch? Hatch, Jason? No. I heard, I heard the sounds of what, people moving about, and then, d did you hear that, that, that awful croaking noise a moment ago? I, I did, that's why I came back, but um, I also had a bit of a strange encounter with those statuettes we saw in the front window. I think perhaps we should leave and and go find the others. I don't feel equipped um, to pry any further than we already have. This is not... Um, I'll put my ear to the hatch and see what I can, or listen for what I can hear as There's well. There's like an audible sound of like him swallowing as you get close to the hatch and <laughs> kind of like freezes up like he's like waiting for something terrible to happen. There's nothing else to learn. Like you don't hear anything different or you, you hear nothing actually. If you want to open the hatch, then maybe something different will happen. So no chanting? No, no chant. No, there was never any chanting. It was just shuffle, just noises, and then this like weird guttural sound. What about smells? Mm, you have to open the hatch. Well, the tobacco is <laughs> too strong. Hmm. Uh, the hatch isn't locked. It's not, conveniently. I open the hatch. <laughs> when you open the hatch, it's just a shaft. There's not even a ladder or anything. It's just a stone, rough, but relatively carved shaft. 
down into inky blackness. Is there um, perhaps a kerosene lamp around us in the office? Sure. I'll light that and drop it down the hatch. It falls for a bit, but it reaches a certain point where the darkness swallows it completely. And there's not even there's, <laughs> and there's not even like a sound of shattering or anything. It's just light, 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 dark. I'll close the hatch, and if there's something heavy, I'll drag it over. There. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Father Samuel's um, already there, like helping move the thing over. I'm going to make I'm, Norbert. I'm going to make you make an insight roll for seeing oh, that. Boy, make an insight roll, Norbert. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yes, yeah, you're going up. How? How? Well, you, clearly you're scared. But uh, what, do you want to share any more of your interiority right now with us? <laughs> I, I will. Be, I very, very uh, hastily put something heavy over the top, but also draw the uh, the broom handled Mauser from inside my coat. So I, I wouldn't normally be so uncool around the father, but uh, now he knows I'm I'm packing heat. All right. So Not even a... batting an eye. You're at a three insight now then, right? So we're at three, four, three, and three. The insights are ticking up, ticking up slowly but surely. Why, why is Norbert at three? Because no, it, 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 it got increased um, Oh, twice. Earlier. Yeah, twice. Oh, twice. okay, I noticed that. With the toad and rat fucking Yes, stuff. that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're catching up. <laughs> so it sounds like the two of you are leaving. Yeah, we're getting out of there. We're getting the fuck out of here. Um, you might run into James and Millicent. James and Millicent, it sounds like you were heading in their direction, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah like yeah. on, on you, the street. Yeah. yeah, you should meet up on the street. Yeah. Although, although once we get out and catch our breath, I will point out if the father has noticed it already, the light coming from the steeple. I did. I did. I did notice um, some sort of... Well, it wouldn't be a midnight mass, but it... I don't know. Perhaps Father Alonso is keeping on hours? I, I would rather not think about that at the exact moment. Let's go find the others. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hastily move down the street. You'll run into the other two and you all can be together now. Father, uh, Mr. Church. Yes, we, yes, um, Miss Reed, uh, uh, how did your um, evening's activities go so far? Depends on how you define well. Uh, yours. Most unusual. We have discovered something. Um, Unexpected. Yes, um, at the tobacco shop. Uh, um, uh, noises and a hatch and just... Hatch underground. Yeah, yes, a, a, a shaft. Oh no. What? What is it? And Millicent looks around, making sure that they're sort of like in a more discreet area. And uh, she'll start to, when she sees that she's sort of like more open, she'll start to move towards like a, like a shadowier part and say, uh, I spoke with Jorge. He was beside himself. His... Uh, his lady friend here was taken by people in the town. He said, taken underground. He said that the, there is something here underground. He did not elaborate on what, but it was enough to... I don't know what, what they would have done to her or what... But something is something is terribly wrong here. And, and, and Mr. Harrow, he, he, he met a man and she'll look up to, to James. Did, I'm just out of character. Did the man I talked to, he mentioned that the real Castronegra was underground. Is that right? Did I hear something about that or am I mixing uh, that I up? I think Jorge, Jorge said, said that okay. there was a gotcha. secret underground. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. There is James, James Will, was it Whitlock? Whatever his name was. He, yeah. uh, he mentioned uh, the barn. <laughs> he was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the barn. He actually outright yeah. said sacrifices being made. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the man I spoke to seemed quite drunk to begin with and uh, but didn't want the last drink i offered him seemed quite upset ra ranting about sacrifices and uh, there's definitely something about this barn he's was saying things he saw at this barn unless this is an elaborate trick by this town to trap us all in the barn there's definitely something wrong with that barn 
There's what did you more. see in the shaft? We, uh, I, I did not look. I heard something coming from the shaft. Uh, it was Mr. Church who opened the hatch and glimpsed, in, uh, glimpsed inside. <clears throat> there was some thing at the bottom of the shaft, some blackness, living void that swallowed a lit kerosene lamp. I dropped down the shaft. <sighs> some terrible thing in the darkness that that frightened me to the bone. Jorge said that the real Castronego is un underground. Uh, I have these, and she'll pull out the keys that she took. Are those, we, are those the bus keys? Yes, we can go. We don't have to be here. And I brought these for you. And I'll pull out the curves for instead. Where did you find these? The tobacco shop. There were the there was a similar set at, at the tomb. The the, 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 the owner of the, the, the tobacco shop is a man named Philip um, uh, Villela Pereira. His nephew, Joaquin, is the, is the one I'm looking for. And if there is some sort of vile darkness beneath his shop, then uh, uh, Joaquin must be in some sort of danger. His family is is clearly involved in something unholy and and I I I I don't I don't I cannot leave him to this doom. The young he man could had also be a part of it. No, he had aspirations. He was running from his family. He was afraid of them. He would not speak to me. And now I think I'm beginning to understand why. Father Samuel, how many women have you seen in this town? Besides not, myself. Not a one. Well, Lupe. Oh, Lupe. But like, yeah, yeah I didn't see her in the kitchen. <laughs> well, Lupe, no but... No children, nor cats, nor dogs. Speaking of children, I did not have a chance to tell you, but the, the library, which is unusually extensive, there was a, a ledger that the librarian was trying to tuck away. Uh, didn't seem to want me to read, and so I read it. And uh, I took some notes, but there are there are hundreds of missing children from this town. Apparently, if records if, if these are accurate, towns and surrounding area mm -hmm. as well. And not that I wish to raise any further alarm, but if you look at the steeple, there is a light that should not be there. Okay. Mr. Church, you had you, when you told us about your conversation with Father Alonso, you, you he he told you about uh, this this barn, Shepherd's Barn, yes. Yes, he actually said it was advisable for me to seek my friend there. And the sheriff has told us to stay away from it. So, which opinion is the trustworthy one, if any of them? Um, I, I, I um. I think we should return to the church, investigate the steeple, and speak to Father Alfonso again. Investigate? Well, there's clearly something terrible happening, and we you, we must at least uh, 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 maybe understand wherein the danger lies so we can best stay out of its path and if it is if 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 if, if finding the the uh, the people at least some of us are here for if they are if their lives are endangered as well then it would help to at least understand how to help the people that we are here to help if not understand more of what this madness is who you are here to help let's just be clear about that she'll look to norbert and say, do you trust this Father Alonso? I do not know Father Alfonso. He was in David's notes, but he did promise to bring me the papers he put together for the David. I had no reason to suspect otherwise, but... I do not know if, if I can trust anyone other than the three of you. At least I know you are all from Silver City prior to this most recent chain of events. 
everyone else here seems to have their own motivations for telling us half truths at best. Miss Reed, I, on the bus ride over here, you asked me if I believe in in, in dark magics and your whole. Uh, uh, um, you have t spoken very, very frequently of your studies and your uh, interests. I, I find myself admittedly quite frightened by the degree of aversion you are feeling to this matter. Do you mean to tell me that this is something entirely out of your depth? Father Samuel, Norbert, Millicent, you all hear the report of gunfire from the hills. James, you don't hear it because the bullet has struck your leg and you have fallen down amidst the group. Uh, it's not like a serious gunshot wound. It's just in the meaty part of your thigh. But someone took a pot shot at you from the hills. Just a minor gunshot wound. Then. A minor gunshot wound. Uh, but that definitely puts a stop to this conversation. What are you? How do you all react? What do you all do? Millicent shrieks uh, and starts to like try and pull James away from where they're at towards the uh, the hotel. Father Samuel like kind of like um, jolts very suddenly. He's been on edge. Uh, he kind of like locks up and freezes uh, in the space they were standing before he's able to like um, like shuffle back. I think we were kind of like standing in the space between a couple of buildings or something, and he just like kind of like goes like further back, like oh down the the alleyway away from the gunfire and is like crouching like low and looking around with wild eyes i think norbert would uh, move into sort of an automatic response to pull people into immediate cover and to see to james's wound as best he could yeah. james is, while he's being dragged he's still reaching to to pick up his dropped notes uh while yeah. he's gasping yeah. and it's just <laughs> in shock uh because of your skills your inherent skill set norbert i'll let you get james safely to cover between it's probably like uh taking a look at the map it's probably like the alley between the library and the tobacco shop um and uh or maybe even i mean maybe you're even like we're kind of drifting back to the hotel at this point you can kind of you can just go straight to the lobby of the hotel if you want i think that's good as well yeah i think father samuel is it safe to say you might have run for the cover of the hotel before helping James? Uh, I think that he would have frozen uh, and, and like, uh, and during that, the period when he like was locked up, someone else was already running to help James. So he kind of like saw that he, and then he just sprinted for like, for cover, yeah, at the hotel. So you would have arrived first because the others have to drag yeah. James. Yeah. When you get to the lobby of the hotel, you hear towards the back, Juan Herrera speaking in a low voice. Well, yes, I heard that. No, I have no idea what it is. I'm sure my customers will be here momentarily. No, you shouldn't say such things. You shouldn't even suggest such things. What kind of a host would I be if I did that? Oh, you naughty, naughty creature. And then he comes out and says, My, what's what's going on? Uh, uh, F Father Samuel, are you quite all right? This like kind of like uh, like pathetic, um, like back of the uh, uh, throat sound, like just kind of like, uh, like, like moans out of his throat because as he walked in, he was about to call out for like help in Mr. Herrera. And then he heard that. And so the sound just kind of got like got trapped in his throat for so long. that just kind of like uh, exhales. He goes, uh, oh, uh, yeah, it, 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 gunshots in yes, the streets. I, I um, heard. I Mr. Heard. Harrow has been wounded. Um, uh, do, oh, do, is, there, is there a doctor in the town? Is there anyone? Do, do, is there a first aid uh, bandages, perhaps? I, I, I may have something in the back. Um, let, uh, please, please. Yes, yes, yes. Let me go call get for my the gauze. Sheriff. Call for the runs. sheriff, please. Yeah, he goes to the panicking. back. Yeah. Um, shortly thereafter, Norbert and James and Millicent, you can be joining. Norbert's commandeering the situation here. And James, you're you're losing a little blood, but they can get you bandaged up. Um, but you're you're now all in the lobby, having <laughs> with uh, post this situation. Uh, 
what are you all doing? Let's just have the scene. I think if there's a couch or a table in the lobby, that's where Norbert will deposit James until we can get some proper bandages for his, his wounds and get a doctor to see him. As, as Juan comes out, he has a, you know some gauze and some antiseptic and you're kind of doing, you're kind of tending to James's wound. And he says, <clears throat> I'm, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really sorry that, that, that we, we don't have a doctor in Castro Negro. Uh, we just sort of make do though, though I've heard that, um, sometimes people convalesce up at the, uh, well, never mind that. Uh, are you quite all right, Mr. Harrow? And then he kind of gets down and while, well, Norbert's helping wrap your, and he kind of like dips his fingertips, like kind of like on your wound a little bit, but like, you know, over the gauze. So there's just like a little bit of seepage of blood onto his fingertips. And he says, looks like it wasn't too bad <laughs> after all that. Not too bad. I. What do you mean you don't have a doctor here? What do you do if someone's injured? <laughs> we, um, well, it's uh, just one of the many troubles you have when you live in a remote desert town, I'm afraid. The best thing is just to not get injured or sick. The best thing would be for people not to shoot him. I am quite sure I don't know what that's all about, but it seems like it's all going to be okay. I, I, I'm actually quite, well, it's quite upsetting to think that an incident like this might besmirch the reputation of our town in your eyes, Ms. Reed. Castronegro really is a lovely place. Did you phone sure. Norbert? Yeah, did you phone the sheriff? Oh, 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 yes, yes. I, I, he's on his way, I'm sure. He would have reacted to the sound as well. Uh, uh, are you quite comfortable, Mr. Harrow? Best as I can be, I suppose. Uh, just keeping this leg up and, well, the bus leaves in the morning. Uh, perhaps, well, as early Juan as turns leave. quickly, almost imperceptibly. He just licks his fingertips really quick and then says well oh there we are then and sheriff fred is coming in he's actually like still he's got he's like he's like basically like half dressed you know he's in his like white tank you know or, you know you know white tank top shirt and or undershirt and just khaki pants and he says what's uh what's going on here what's 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 the trouble i uh, did someone get shot? Yes, uh, someone shot us. Shot at us from the hill. He's like, "Oh my god, damn!" Well, I'm oh, really sorry about that. That's just terrible. Are, 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 well, we, you seem like you're okay. It looks like the bleeding is under control. <sighs> I'm not sure why something like that would have happened. Uh, maybe somebody was out shooting coyotes and they just, uh, you know, a bullet went stray or something. It, it, in no, the middle no, of the it, town? It, it was, it was, um, it was multiple gunshots, right? No, it was just one. Just oh, one just one, okay, shot. gotcha. It was directed at the town, yes, it, it was. Well, it's uh, probably he's... best if you just spend the rest of the night here in your rooms and then Jorge can drive you back to Silver City in the morning. Uh, Sheriff, um, if, if I, I, I meant to ask, um, I am looking to inquire uh, with a family in town if I wish to, uh, uh, if, if perhaps after leaving, I can write. I, I, the Villela Pereiras, uh, where, do you know where they live? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look around, friend. We're lousy with Villela Pereiras and Diaz's here in Castro uh, Negro. Uh, uh, Philip, or perhaps a uh, Joaquin. Oh, uh, Philip, who owns the tobacco shop? Yes, yes. I stopped by earlier, but it was closed. Well, it'll be open in the morning. Now, you folks go ahead and get some rest tonight. I think it's probably best if you don't go sneaking around in the dark anymore. 
outside. This man has been shot and you want us to stay inside. Yes, was, I'm going to look into the matter. He was targeted. I was a sniper. I'm sure it was an it was accident. A random hunting accident, hunting at night at a distance. This was meant to assassinate us. You warned us. That's a us strong that word, assassinate. You us earlier this evening, Sheriff, that we were not safe in your town. What is it you're going to do to make it safe for us? Or should we contact outside authorities if you're unable to keep visitors safe in your town, Sheriff? I'm going to go look into the matter. Now, do you know which direction the gunfire came from? Yes. And I will explain to him exactly where it came from. Yeah, it would have been from the north. He says, okay, well, there's a, some foothills in the north. I'll drive out there right now. And I'll go see what I can find. The four of you just stay inside. Maybe find you a room without windows. And then he goes. He leaves the four of you there in the hotel lobby. Juan says, I'm... Again, I'm so, so sorry about this. This is just, uh, this is just really, really unacceptable behavior from anyone. Accident or no, one shouldn't just go around shooting rifles willy-nilly. <sighs> Mr. Herrero, would you mind getting Mr. Herrero some ice to calm any fever that he might, might take on? Of course. Thank you. And he goes off. Um, Father Samuel has like sat down. He has like, you know, in his left hand, he's taking out the rosary. It's kind of like draped around his, it's just like trembling hand a little bit. It's just, it's just out there hanging. Uh, and in his right hand, he's holding, uh, his, his little pen. Cause he's opened up his journal. He's kind of like feverishly just like writing down his thoughts and like a couple of like notes of things that have happened. I'd say that probably if like Millicent, um, or James, like, were able to catch a glimpse at the pages, they would see his earlier bus sketch he was doing, uh, which even in like black, like simple black and white cross hatching, like the eyes would probably give that very like same like vivid, they, they, even though it's like, you know, just pencil shading, it's like, it's like, it's like, oh, those are the the green eyes. And like, it has like the similar, like, it's not like the same person you met that the, at the bar, but it would be like the same cheekbones, the kind of like similar like dark hair. Clearly he's been drawing someone who resembles that guy. Before we go any further with this, I love that. I do want to say that James, between getting shot and then seeing Juan Herrera definitely lick your blood from his fingertips, I'm going to make you roll insight real quick. Makes sense. <laughs> you know. uh, three. Okay, so, equal. Okay, yeah. so you're you're fine. Uh, you're not going any deeper into the uh, into the situation, um, mentally speaking. Let's pick up with what Father Samuel just described, though, this drawing, which looks like a Diaz or a Valela Pereira. And we haven't met any uh, of, uh, I'm sorry, the Vila, uh, butchering the name, uh, the Viela Pereiras? Father Alonso's a Valela Pereira. Okay, got it. Well, yeah, okay, got it. And you've met several Diazes. So. And did... Uh, Father uh, Alonso had, did he have green eyes or was it brown? He did. He did have green eyes. Okay. Hair's gray though because of his age, but he had definitely had the same green eyes. Yeah. I think uh, Millicent is a bit more concerned with James, though I think she does catch a glance at uh, Father Samuel uh, with his rosary and his sketchbook in hand. Um, but she looks to James and says, if you're not safe here, we can go. Drive the bus back in the dark. I don't know if that's much of a better idea. Maybe we can hold on till morning. I, I think I'll I think I can feeling I don't know if better is the right word, but I think I'll make it. Uh, he's a little like delirious he's mostly just been like eyes closed kind of just like kind of clutching his leg a little bit um this, is, this may sound a bit out of turn but miss reed you're with your 
your profession and i don't pardon me if i don't know the the etiquette around this but you you say you're a medium and and do others hire you for your services do you do you see spirits how does this work exactly i've heard theories but i've not had a chance to talk to anyone so versed in this profession my mediumship is based on intuition it's sensation it's feeling it's not direct speech it's uh, vibrational uh, when i contact spirits for others i'm not so much speaking with them as much as they are speaking through me with with their energy i know it all sounds uh, terribly terrific but it It's, I've never felt this this way though before in all my studies and all my time doing this. This is, this is overwhelming. You asked before, and she looks at uh, Father Samuel, you asked about my experience. Well, that is, I have not experienced something to this degree, no. I have entertained private guests. I have lectured at various salons here and there across Europe and the Americas. But no, I've never directly spoken with a, an entity from the other side. They have not spoken to me directly. We have exchanged energy and vibrations, but never words. This is, this is ungodly, whatever it is, and surely anything being communed with is... Forgive me for using the only words I feel I am able to grasp at for the moment, but demonic. Who was that man in your sketchbook? Uh, what? You're oh, sketching. Uh, yeah, oh, um, yes, uh, I was idly um, sketching this on the bus earlier. Uh, this uh, this is this is Joaquin uh, Valela Pereira, the, the the young man I I, I came looking for. Um, uh, he had a very distinctive appearance, and I picked up a bit of sketching in my youth. I thought that perhaps I might use it to ask around, but that was not the. It's not how the evening pr uh, proceeded. His eyes, what color were they? A, 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 a most vivid green. Um, the father actually had very similar eyes. I, I, I understand that they are related. I, I just lapsed in asking about him. Um, like, uh, like, um, like emeralds. They were just a, a very bright and vibrant green. Mr. Harrow, the bartender at the Changeling, his eyes were green. That same green, but he was not Hela Pereira. The clerk at the tomb uh, was a Diaz. He also had these same green eyes. Well, that's not all that unusual. I, I mean, I mean, well, it it is. I in the way that green eyes are not exactly the most uh, frequent trait, but perhaps they, well, small towns like this. I don't wish to make assumptions, but. You know what they you say seen, about small communities. Have you seen eyes this green before? Well, yes, I, it, but but I, I take her. Walking. No, no, I have not. What are you doing, Norbert? Um, listening to the conversation, I was looking at the sketch, but still preoccupied with the sniper shots the juxtaposition of the supernatural and the outright attack with a rifle seemed to be uh, at odds in, in Norbert's mind. If they could uh, do something terrible to us with things creeping below the city or the town, um, why wouldn't they just do that? <laughs> if there are things that swallow kerosene lamps versus shooting us with rifles, maybe there are two factions or more at play. So Norbert's turning that over and still wants to go and check out the steeple at the church so he's keeping an eye through the windows to make sure the light hasn't gone out. It has not. Indeed. It's just right across the street. You could probably just pop over there and do it. I think I might just slip away then. 
Um, I'll tell everyone before I go, but I don't want to uh, endanger them any further than they have been, and I've got a weapon, so. George, any, you've surely seen far more grievous wounds, but any advice for recovering from such an injury? I will stop on the way back and make sure your wound is well taken care of. I'm sure this is why, Mr. Church, going off on your own like this. I know that you're an experienced warman, but... Absolutely not, miss. But I am at odds to see what else we should do. I think the three of you are safer here, although I would put no trust in our hotelier. Nor would I. Uh, before you go, leave me with one of those statuettes. I'll leave you with all five <laughs> and this trench line. I want to fast forward to Norbert going over to the church. Norbert, the stairs up to the steeple are right in the front of the entrance hall. You, of course, have to walk past the churchyard and cemetery in order to get to the front part. Uh, the doors are open because it's, you know, sanctuary, so you can go right in. Of a sorts, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, I will go right in, and uh, I don't think I would pretend to go otherwise, so I would just uh, have my weapon drawn, just in case. Do you go up the stairs? Oh, yes. You get up to the tower, the top of which is a hexagonal room. There is mechanics up above for a bell, but there is no bell. And the room, this hexagonal room, has very odd slit-like windows. The atmosphere in the tower is thin, cold, much colder than the ambient temperature outside. But the most striking thing of all is in the center of this chamber is a rather horrible statue carved from that same oily black rock. It depicts a distorted human figure wrapped partly in a shroud with a sickle in one hand and the other hand pointing at something. First, make an insight roll. One. What do you do? Uh, I take it all in. I am trying to perceive where the light source is coming from, and I'm trying to work out in my head whether or not this stone that is supposed to be um, the, the older part of the building or the oldest part of the building is indeed the same stone that the statuettes in the tobacco shop were carved from. It seems that way. They are not. The statuettes are carved of jade. This is like a black stone. Yes. Okay. You can tell that at a glance. Okay. Um, and the light source? The light source, uh, there are uh, a few lanterns hung on the walls in between the little slit windows. And presumably it would be Father Alonso who's lit those. Presumably. So it's not that this is a surprise to him. <laughs> <laughs> and what direction is the, um, the hand pointing? To the southwest. Indeed, it's pointing at one of those slit windows. I will go and take my best look outside of the pointing direction. You can see it illuminated in the distance by a shaft of moonlight, framed up almost perfectly with a slit window, illuminated by moonlight. You see a tall stone obelisk out in the wilderness. It would probably be okay. hard to find from the ground, but up here you can see it. It's, it, it, it. It corresponds to where it's supposed to be on your map, yeah. Is that at all close to the direction that I perceive the gunshot to have come from? No, the gunshot comes from the opposite, the opposite side. Opposite side. And is there anything else? You said there were mechanisms that are no longer in use. Is there anything else connected to the statue 
uh, here other than it's strange. how do you how do you investigate what do you do um, I guess I'll, I do my best uh, thinking of uh, maybe battlefield tactics looking for booby traps or anything kind of uh, uh, hidden devices that sort of thing upon getting close to the statue you have a flashback to the first time you saw someone die. We're going to take a five minute break and I'd like to hear that flashback when we get back. Norbert, a flashback to the time you first saw someone die. Norbert has this stark recollection of a nighttime advance through no man's land to get to a dugout entrance for forward German tunnels and him and a hand-picked squad of volunteers make their way surreptitiously in to an advance entrance and as they get down inside of the tunnels and try to stealthily make their way to where they know the forward German HQ is stationed. They hear this echoing throughout the dark cramped chambers of Lily Malane playing on a gramophone, echoing throughout. And it's both disconcerting because it's so eerily quiet and they can hear it so clearly and disconcerting because they can also hear pounding of shells overhead while this singer is singing so melodically in the background. And as they make their way forward, they can't help but notice just how deathly quiet it is and only the entrancing melody of the crackling gramophone in the background. When they finally reach the forward entrance to German HQ, the sergeant in the lead immediately moves to the gramophone that's been drawing us forward the entire time to pull the needle off the record, triggering a booby trap that collapses the tunnel on top of us. And it's one of the last things Norbert hears before comrades pull him free of the collapse, collapsing tunnel and it sticks with him all of this time, a mouthful of dirt and Lily Berlain in his ears. Thank you. Please make an insight roll. Five. Wouldn't that's creepy. The, <laughs> that's the thing that's pulling you closer to oblivion. <clears throat> Maybe he hears it on the breeze. <laughs> Let's go back to the other group. Things have calmed down a little bit. James is stable. Juan has gone back to sleep. Sheriff Garcia's gone. He's going to go look into where the shots came from. So what are the three of you doing? You're still in the lobby, I assume, unless you go somewhere else. I think, yeah, I think um, Millicent would have suggested bringing James back up to his room as long as it had a window. Um, and obviously asking Father Samuel to help uh, assist him yes, upstairs. Um, but when we get to James's room, there is a window in this room, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, as Millicent is looking out the window, since it's the first time she's been able to do it in a room the entire time she's been here, uh, she's very sort of contemplating, looking at the street, the quietness, and the dark, and uh, without turning back to the others and says, I have a possibly a foolish idea. Yes. It would require, especially of you, 
Father Samuel to touch the edge of darkness, as it were. I, I don't understand or take your meaning, Miss Reed. I have tools with me with which to divine and, re and reach out to the other side. But I need sitters, those who would witness this, such as yourselves. And she looks at both uh, Father Samuel and James. Are you speaking of a, 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 a um, I, I, I forgot the term all of a sudden. Uh, seance. 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 Seance, thank you, thank you. Blanked, I was like, S. Are you speaking of a, a seance? In, yes, in so many words. I mean, but, with all due respect, Miss Reed, at large, my understandings of um, the, 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 the mediums and their seances is, well, largely a hoax. Uh, um, Henry Houdini actually put out a rather fascinating book on this very subject. Uh, uh, you don't mean to tell me that you intend to do something that is genuine? Perhaps. There's only one way to find out. Why would we tempt such forces, then, if indeed they are real? Why? You yourself said that these uh, forces at play are other, and if I indeed believe that, which, given this evening's... Well, all the same, what is to say that it wouldn't be more dangerous for us to do this? It very well could be. But seeing as... We are staying here for the evening, and she looks to James, and seeing Father, as how... we are already in enough danger already, I don't see how it could get much worse, and I don't think we're going to get anything useful from anyone in this town. I think, I think Miss Reed has the right of it. We should use what abilities, what tools we have, and James is like stubbornly standing up again, kind of wincing, kind of like almost tearing at the eyes, like, I say we do it. What... What do you need me to do? Well, if we can't trust the living, then perhaps we can trust the dead. I have exactly. the tools in I have the tools in my room. Uh, all I need from you, and please stay seated. But Father Samuel, if you could at least prepare a table and uh Miss Reed, set... I, I am not going to stand in your way, but I will speak my mind on this matter that is to say that there is no speaking that can be done with the dead whatever you may commune with is not the dead it is something else and i feel very firm on that matter as a man of the cloth i will be the one speaking to it not you so you don't have to worry about that i i will i will get you a table is there anything else you need me to do or am i will you allow a priest of the church to stand in the corner and prepare a prayer in the event should things go quite awry. Prepare a prayer, cover the mirrors, but I will need you to sit with me, both of you. So if you can, situate it so that James can comfortably sit at the table as well. Yes, yes, I, I, I shall get it done, yes. Thank you. And she'll briskly walk out and uh, as... Uh, quickly as she can start to rifle and gather up her things and i think when she's in there she's also in her room she's got gathering her actual luggage because she's planning on moving into james's room because she does not trust being in this windowless space i love it um sounds like i mean i like this as a die roll for millicent maybe with help dice from james and father samuel so it'd be like two dice from millicent probably two dice from father samuel if you're going to be praying and stuff and James, one die. I'm going to roll against you. I got a five. So you got to beat a five on all these dice. I got two sixes. There we go. Uh, done and done. Power of prayer. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Good result. But a six, which could be problematic for everyone. Yes. Did we say that? I liked that uh, we were chatting just before the recording about 
uh, including personal effects from the people we're looking for. I don't know if that's what Mill Millicent is oh, yeah. thinking of. That's interesting. Yeah, you could, yeah I think, yeah, yeah I think uh, if we want to have that scene, uh, as she's sort of sitting up uh, into the setting up on the table, um, she has laid out the figurines that uh, Norbert had given her. And uh, she sets down a spirit board with a very old looking planchette. And uh, she's lighting a couple small tea candles that she pulls out of her purse because, you know, got a cup prepared. Uh, and she has some incense as well, some sticks that she's lighting up as well. And if you have anything that you would like to use as some sort of anchor uh, or some something to reference uh, the people that you're looking for, like Professor Godfrey or this Joaquin, that drawing perhaps that you have. James he will is, sorry, go ahead. Out the, he'll just like rip out the page that he did of a sketch of Joaquin and like pass it over. James opens up his trunk with his back to the, the rest of the room, kind of just stubbornly standing on the leg again, takes out some papers, takes out a book that was uh, one of his, his professor had lent it to him, which is actually Seven Sermons to the Dead. It's a translation <laughs> by Young. Um, and under the papers, as he's picking up these other effects that he found in the, the boarding room, uh, where Professor Godfrey last was staying, there's also a 38 revolver at the bottom, and he pauses, reaches to touch it, waits a second, and then kind of picks it up, feels the weight of it, and just puts it in his jacket, and then turns with everything else and brings it to the table. Millicent, what does the uh, beginning of the ritual look like? The mirrors are covered, the lights are low, with only the candlelight in the room. The incense is burning, and sitting at the head of this table, I imagine it's a very small table, but she looks over at James, and she looks over at Father Samuel. She says, uh, your hands, please, put them on the table. And she takes a deep breath in, closes her eyes, and she puts one hand on the planchette and the other on the table. Spirits, oh spirits, whoever, wherever you are, I call upon you here in this hour of need. Please, if you are here, give me a sign. There is a initial confirmation that something is here with you perhaps a tapping on the window or a scratching at the door. They are receptive to your entreaty. What do you do? She mutters to the other two. Okay, just focus on my voice. Keep your minds clear. Keep yourselves open. Spirits. We are in great danger here in Castro Negro. What do you know of this place? What secrets does it hold? All of you feel a sensation like your stomach falling away, like a, a rushing, a sinking. The lantern goes out in the room, plunging you into darkness. Even the moonlight outside the window is swallowed up by the darkness. But then the darkness lifts and you find yourself still sitting at that small little table, except now you're in a beautiful sunlit courtyard a courtyard that by the look of the roof tiles of the building is like a Spanish villa courtyard. You are sitting in the center of a circle of high back wooden chairs, a very wide circle of wooden chairs around a shallow pool of water, which your little table is inside where you're sitting. And around 
or in each of these high back chairs, looks like there's there's probably like twenty or more of them. There is a person sitting. Their manner of dress is all very old fashioned. Some of them high frilly collars, some poofy pantaloons, but even some that are not as old, but a little bit later in time, bustles, top hats, that kind of thing. But all of these people sitting in the chairs have bright green eyes and dark black hair. you will notice that one of the chairs is empty and they just speak as one voice. Find our resting place, find our vault and all will be revealed. I would like for each to make an insight roll, please. Three, five. one. James, you got a five, so you are going up to four. James, how are you feeling right now? Very vulnerable. Very um, like I'm plunged into into the deep end. You know, helpless. I already heard about this vault before, or mention of it. Norbert, when you're done at the bell tower, where do you go? Or what do you do at this point after you see what the statue's pointing at? You have this weird flashback. What do you, what do, you do then? I think I do a cursory look around the uh, interior of the chapel for Father Alonso, but I, if I don't find him immediately, I'd go back to the hotel. Yeah. You go back to the hotel. The lobby is lit with a single lantern sconce, so it's quite dark, just a very dim little light. It's very quiet, though you do hear some murmuring coming from upstairs. Presumably it's your new companions doing whatever they're doing. You also hear a voice coming from the direction towards the rear of the lobby where Juan, where his quarters are. You hear Juan muttering, though you can't quite understand what he's saying at the distance you're at, but it is a very conspiratorial mutter. I'll put my ear to the door. Make the roll. One die, unless you can make the case of being an ex-soldier helping you here. Stealth, maybe? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I like, like it. Right? Yeah. yeah, I like it. Go ahead. Three. You only catch the last little bit, the last little bit of what he says. And you can't even tell who he's talking to. He's much like what Father Samuel heard. He's like just talking to himself. The last little bit is, they'll be gone soon enough. And then we can continue with our work. I believe they've gotten up to something very big at the Casa de Diaz. That's it. What do you do? Well, 
while he's in his room, can I take advantage of looking around the hotel front desk and office to see if there's anything that he may have left behind? Sure. You can make another roll. Two again or one? Uh, two's fine. Still three. You're looking around. Poking around the office. Maybe the front desk. There's also the kitchen area as well. Not having any luck with the ledger or the office, there's not much there to find because I don't think they do much business here at the Hotel Herrera. The kitchen is remarkably clean. Except for the human fingernail you find on the floor. Like a whole nail? Whole nail. That's not good. <laughs> okay. All right. But otherwise, that's it. We've probably got about 10, 15 minutes left in playtime. So after we're done with this seance, the night is getting long, but it's not over. What are you all doing? Before we end the seance, I did want to step up in this spiritual realm, this dream realm, whatever it is. But I want to try and approach this empty chair to see if I can glean anything from it. If, if I know who might sit at it, if there's a name plate, or if there's an identity attached to it. When you walk up to the chair, you see that it's not actually empty. There is a rat on its hind legs giving you a sideways glance, flicking its twin tails back and forth and rubbing its little pink paws together. Make an insight roll. Three. What are you thinking right now as you look at this entity? She's recalling the the red statue that she saw at the uh, the tomb and how much this resembles it. It's all coming it's together for her. It's not completely dissimilar from the figure that's sort of in the green little statues as well. Not quite the same mm -hmm. thing, but it's a rat. Which yeah. There's a connection. But uh, she remembers seeing that red statue and uh, seeing it sort of side-eyed side, side -eyed her, uh, glaring at her. She'll... Uh, back away carefully and begin to make her way back towards the, the table with the others. And when she sits back down, she uh, closes her eyes and uh, with this sort of exhale, she uh, tries to sort of bring them back to the material. You're back in the hotel room, no troubles whatsoever. Uh, did anyone else see that? <laughs> the, 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 there were people I, I saw I saw a gathering someone else spoke of a vault but yet another secret in this town this must be our only place to look really uh, I, where would I, that I, be I, Underneath, uh, oh, uh, underneath, perhaps um, these tunnels, the barn. I, I, who is to say? I um, forgive me. I'm feeling rather unwell at the moment. Thank you for your openness, Father. I don't think I could have connected to that strongly if you had not been here. We should find Mr. Church. We should wait for him to return. Um, 
before we do anything else. He is um he is a soldier. He has been through uh, something quite terrible. I'm sure that he has the best head for approaching a situation like this. Indeed, yes, you're probably you, you could probably run into him in the hall as Norbert as well, Norbert, assuming you're going back to your room at some point or trying to find the others. You can all meet up fairly easily. And James, even though you're shot in the leg, you can get around, but slowly. Oh, I meant to stop at the speakeasy, buy a membership and get James some alcohol. <laughs> the speakeasy is probably closed by now. They didn't do much business tonight. And in any case, the customers are quite agitated, the ones that they did have. You have to break into every business to, if you want to do any shopping. Mr. Church, did you find anything? A very strange statue in the steeple. And I'll describe it in detail to where it was pointing to the obelisk out on the edge of the town. Did, uh, did Norbert see what the obelisk looked like, or is it just sort of like a featureless column of from that distance it's just a yeah it looked like it's hard to tell exactly but it's probably about 10 15 feet tall um okay. it would be difficult to find on the ground if you were just trying to pinpoint its location because of the you know there's the rocky you know kind of like rises in the ground and trees and things like that i can point out that i have it on the map if we want to investigate tomorrow morning uh, yes, well, that is a question. Do we want to stay in for the evening? Do we... we... Uh, Mr. Harrow has been shot. His He it would be in no condition to go uh, uh, running about, especially this late in the evening. And besides, if should his wound bleed, won't that attract the coyotes? Um, I don't know. Uh, um, uh, 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 perhaps... Uh, on the one hand, I do not feel particularly able to sleep given these circumstances, but on the other, I don't feel as all comfortable going about in the dark as things currently stand. I think you all would notice that as uh, where as Millicent was pretty agitated before the seance and like pretty adamant about getting out, she's become a little bit more like herself again, more relaxed. Almost the curiosity has come back after encountering what we encountered. And she'll say, well, we have a choice and I have the keys, so I suppose we can leave whenever we want. Uh, but there is something afoot here. You all have people you care about missing and they are at the center of this to some degree. What roles they play, we don't know, but the only way to find out is to search and dig deeper. I, for one, am a little bit tired of being told to just stay in the hotel room as if nothing is going on here. And perhaps you would know, Miss Reed, if this is supposed to be a warning or an invitation, but I don't think those figures will let us ignore that they, this vault. I, for one, can't let it go. The feeling that it awaits us, that they are waiting for our next move. I can wrap more bandages around this. And I'm starting to pace, wincing but pacing like I'm ready to go. I, 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 I don't know how I can be of assistance here aside from... <laughs> I mean, should we befall any danger? I am. I I don't exactly have any um skill at defending myself. You have a strong spirit. That could come in handy. Yes, yes, perhaps. And and I, I must I must think of Joaquin. I must think of Joaquin and the others who are, no doubt, in danger and in peril. Not just their 
their their their their physical peril, but spiritual. Um. Mm, yes. 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 Forgive me for my my bordering upon cowardice. I am quite frightened. So it sounds like you all are going to go out tonight. Then sounds like we should. I'm wondering well, if we should still. Where to? <laughs> I wonder if we should still nick that bus. Just to have an automobile. We have the keys, right? You have yeah. the keys. The bus is just yeah. parked in front of the hotel. So yeah. 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 What what pieces do we still need to fill in before we leave town proper to go exploring? I mean, I can remind you really quickly of some yeah, things that you've learned of. Uh, obviously, there's this obelisk. Several mentions have been made of this barn. Uh, several mentions have been made of the Diaz vault. Uh, there's the Casa de Diaz, which you can see on this hill from town. Um, those are a few of the things. There's also these smaller things, perhaps. Well, you've, you've looked in the bell tower, but there's also this uh, private room in the library as, the, as another thing. Um, there's the trap door in the tobacco shop. There's lots of different things to go poke at if you want to. I'm wondering, uh, obviously, because going down into uh, uh, tunnels beneath the tobacco shop, especially when we when Norbert witnessed living darkness, is definitely not a, a preferable approach. But, um, and this might be a thing Father Samuel will articulate. Um, I was like, well, perhaps first we should investigate this barn. It seems very central, and we have one party telling us to stay away from it and another telling us to go to it. If there are, uh, 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 perhaps, if this is a, a place where people have been taken, uh, it, perhaps we might find something, it, uh, signs. I, I I feel like that is, uh, the more uh, human evils at play are the more approachable right now. I'm inclined to believe that it was the sheriff who said to stay away from the barn, and in that regard, he may I. Uh, he may have been trying to help us. Uh, it was the father, the one with green eyes, uh, who wanted us to, or wanted you rather, to go to the barn. Was it not, Mr. Church? It was also the sheriff who was telling you to stay in the hotel as well, for what that's worth. Well, that's true. Yes, it was Father Alonso um, who told us to go to the barn to find David. But, Mr. Harrow, didn't you say that you spoke to someone at the speakeasy about sacrifices at the barn? This man, James, strongly implied that if I went to the barn, I would, I would see what he was talking about. He claimed to have seen things and seemed to almost sober up when the subject came up. I can't see what trickery he would be trying to to pull on me he just seemed to have strong feelings about the place as well when you made your inquiries earlier at the library i wonder the, the shepherd's barn mentioned by the librarian it was not but he did seem uh a little bit uh obsessed with with keeping a private room closed um, seemed very, uh, very helpful, but almost overly helpful. It seems there's a secret room in every building in this town. Perhaps a visit to the library is in order before we head out of town, then. We know that the librarian has left for the evening. Is that not right, Father Samuel? Yes, we saw him um, locking up shop for the for the evening. Um, uh, yes, the library perhaps is um, the, the the way we should begin. After all, a uh, calamus gladio fortior. After all, are all four of you going to break into the library, or are you going to split up some? <laughs> I think splitting up at the moment is a little perilous, given that one of us has a bullet wound. Yeah, I think I'm good with sticking together right now. Yeah. Very well. As long as one of you keeps a lookout, breaking into the library is no trouble. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, does Father Samuel feel like he'd want to be on the lookout or that he'd 
once you ate in the bed or? Um, well, this is, I guess, the first question would be um, if James is going into the library or not, because Father Samuel feels more inclined to be sticking around him. But if he's going in the library where others are, then I think Father Samuel will probably want to be lookout. He's very wide-eyed and alert at the moment. I think James, yeah, James. needs to respect all of us, right? Because James has been there. None of us. Yeah, he knows the yeah. Yeah. way yeah. around. I think Father Samuel wants to say the hell out of there anyway. So like he'll uh he'll uh he'll he'll be lookout. Okay, cool. Very well. Breaking into the library is no trouble. Getting to the private room is no trouble. Jimmying open that door, again, no trouble. Inside the private room. Piles of old books, books of an occult nature. The Liberivonis prodigies in the New England canon. An untitled Latin guide to cannibalism. Quite a lot of other dark tomes. That's at a glance what you see. I think Millicent has like her lighter up, is just sort of trying to keep light open. Um, but if it's possible, I'd like to look through deeper into some of these tomes to see if there is any information about history or even like this vault, maybe even a diary. Make a, you can get two dice because of your, your occupation. And you can even take six. help from, you can take help from James and uh, Norbert too, yep. but it looks like you got a six, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, you will find a book depicting a ritual, a ritual at an obelisk that you will recognize, Norbert, that's rendered in this illustration. James, the ritual appears to be being performed by people, native people, ancient native peoples. They're not dressed like, like modern day peoples. The ritual involves people bound in a circle at the base of the obelisk while a priest readies and raises a knife to plunge into their chest. Father Samuel, you're outside. When the sheriff pulls up in his truck, he says, oh, Father, funny to find you out here, given you all were just shot at a couple hours ago. Sheriff, yes. Um, I'm afraid that I um, am rather prone to bouts of profound anxiety and claustrophobia. <laughs> I needed some fresh air. Um, against my better judgment, I found myself walking out of town and, well, not out of town, just out of the hotel. Well, I, uh, I went and looked into the hills where your friend thought that the shot came from. And I found something that I think you're going to want to see. Um, here, hop in. In, 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 the, in the vehicle? Yes, in the vehicle. You you have something to show me? What? I do have something to show you. What is that? I think you probably best will want to look upon it rather than me try to describe it. Um. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, uh, um, forgive me. Do you mind if I ask just what? what this is all about. It's rather late and I'm, my heart is pounding in my chest, Sheriff. I, 
I feel like I can barely stand to breathe. <laughs> It involves Joaquin. I see. I see. Um, uh, mm. Come on. Oh, there's God. not any time to waste. Oh, he freezes up. <laughs> um, do we have like some kind of like lookout signal, I guess, thing that like... <laughs> I don't know. Did you don't settle know. on that? I was going to say, I don't think so. Um, I feel like, oh God... If I'm like by the door, maybe I can like, like, like knock slightly on it, like kind of like idly drumming my fingers, but like it's me trying to get their attention. I don't know. He's freaking out. He's work. paralyzed. It's not gonna work. Oh <laughs> uh, shit. Um, I think he's just gonna say, um, sorry, no, no, sheriff. I think I'm not not, not at the moment. I'm I'm, I'm comporting myself. Can if you could uh, perhaps show me in the morning. No, I don't think so. And at this point will pan out to <laughs> see a line of torches, people in the foothills moving somewhere in a line. And we'll end our session there today. Let's go to Stars and Wishes. I have so many stars, <laughs> just let me just say, like from the awkward dinner um, moments, uh, especially when Millicent came and, and uh, starts explaining that the meat is something other than meat or more inclusive than anyone expected, and all of the awkwardness around something that felt like a mashup between the table in Texas Chainsaw Massacre meets the table in Monty Python's The Meaning of Life with poisoned salmon mousse and everyone moving away from the food dishes, uh, to the wonderful awkwardness at the speakeasy, and then Father Samuel a couple of occasions, just this last one was great, uh, uh, and the unexpected gunshots, um, just, just great, like great RPing, wonderful surprise moments, um, yeah. Uh, um, wonderful. Yeah, uh, tension really ramped up this, this session, um, which is great, obviously. Um, that's what you want. Um, but yeah, I was not expecting uh, James to get shot. So uh, start for that, Jason. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, because like it's, you know, it's that old sort of like classic trope in horror movies where you think you have a way out and then something just sudden happens and you're just put back to square one and you've got to figure things out again. And I think that, you know, you know, it's a trope for a reason, but it's a, it's a really good trope to lean on sometimes. And uh, this way it was very effective. Uh, um, I, thought, uh, I thought Norbert's flashback was really good. Um, just to sort of... Uh, like set up and uh, using the uh, the the uh, phonogram, uh, is that what it's called? I don't know. Um, but uh, using that as sort of like this sort of lead in uh, was really 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 spot on, um, really evocative, and uh, uh, I love uh, Alex the way that you're sort of playing this sort of not quite a doubting Thomas, but like someone who's just very sort of in crisis all the time, uh, whether it's of faith or of uh, understanding or of uh, courage. Um, and I love that, you know, he's the one who got caught up with uh, with uh, the sheriff at the end. Um, really curious to see how that plays out, obviously. And uh, I love that we're seeing more of James. I love that we're seeing like this like determination from him. Like, you know, it's a sort of like other side of the coin you know uh, he's he's tired of being sort of not bossed around but sort of manhandled around you know uh, thought of is like uh you know thought of someone who can't isn't capable of of taking care of themselves uh or of handling the situation um and so i really liked his you know, his turn into becoming much more fortified much more uh um assertive and uh I also really liked the scene with Jorge at the bar. I thought uh, the RP for Jorge was especially really good. Um, this kind of like pathetic man who is like, who knows uh, at least a little bit of what's going on, but is like lost everything at this point. And it's like, 
feel so sad for him. So yeah, it's it's really pitiful. But uh, um, but wish is to survive. Uh, who knows what will be left of us? Um, but to uh, hopefully get to the barn and get to see what that's about. Um, maybe get to this obelisk too. I don't know. Maybe do do a whole little uh, human sacrifice uh, as a treat. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, stars out there. I have a, a lot of my stars. I, I started like took notes of for for Norbert specifically. Um, I really, I just just as like a a a, a narrative uh, touch of just like the serendipity of it all. Norbert's first insight raises like coming in like the raises coming in the tobacco shop, being like the statues and the dark shaft. Uh, very much like he's gone this long without being phased, especially as a veteran of World War One. Uh, and then it's these extremely subtle and disturbing things that finally begin to spike at origin that felt really cool. I really like Norbert's speech uh, when we reconvened uh, with uh, James and Millicent, uh, like uh, about the shaft, the way he just described, like, you know, it swallowed the light of a kerosene lamp, you know, just the way it dropped down there. There was, uh, it was just really evocative. I love World War One horror. So, I mean, like started that flashback, by the way, like, like uh, games like Never Going Home or I'm really fond of those as well. Just like Eldritch World War One stuff. Millicent uh, having like fear for everything that's going on. And then after the seance that immediately segueing into like more of like a driven interest in going further in was, was really cool to see play out. I, I, but also to, on the, on the, you know, on the former side of that, like immediately off putting to have the occultist, the medium, this one be like, hey, we're leaving. Like this, this, this is, this is terrible. And just being like, Oh, even you. Oh no. Okay. Bye. Um, that made me very unsettled. That was great. Jack. Uh, yeah, Gabriel, I agree with uh, seeing more of James today was particularly enjoyable. I liked his interactions at the Changeling um, with with other James. Um, and even after getting shot, he's just like, I'm starting to feel better already. Like already just being like, listen, I, I, I'm i going to get through this with a bullet wound um, was really great. Uh, yeah, no, I'm having a great time with that. Um, Jason, you know, stars as always to how you choose to swing scares at us for any given complications is always uh, one genuinely frightening, but also always narratively satisfying. So everything that we were rolling today was just particularly uh, 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 it ramped up the horror like you promised, but it was uh, it felt very cinematic. So just general stars because this session was very, very um, vivid in my imagination, which is yeah, I mean, like. I really do kind of want things to spiral out of control for Father Samuel, particularly because as soon as I hit Insight Five, he's going to start being kind of like destructive towards like the further investigation to preserve his own sanity and his faith there. So you all have fun. tons of books to destroy now. Yeah, <laughs> so. I, have, I have so many books to burn. This is great, um, man. Yeah, I uh, I just I just wish for a brutal end, like a a, a, a climactic finisher. So yeah, yeah, seconding. All of those stars. Um, I really, uh, I think, as soon as the, the first session, um, when Jack's character was a medium, it's like, okay, we got to, we got to have a seance at some point. So I'm really happy we did that. Um, love the back and forth uh, between the the occultist and the priest. That was really fun. Little little banter there and rationale, and then your both of your reactions to it were really fun. Um, stars, uh, everything Norbert's been doing. It's just the the characterization, like's been mentioned. Um, just pulls me deeper into the story like every with the way you speak uh kenneth every every line and uh, i just believe it so intensely um and um stars also to just the atmosphere again just this feeling uh from everything jason's giving us the way we're getting these um part of it was was rolling a lot of um good but bad for our character insight roles and getting those moments that are uh every bit of knowledge was very rich and interesting, but also horrifying. Like, Oh, it keeps getting worse. The, deep, the more we dig, the worse it's going to get. And I really enjoy that feeling along with characters who don't feel particularly competent at all. Um, so just having no good options and then kind of having to make those choices is, is a delight. So um, wishes, I think to, I'm trying to go there with my own character being just stubborn and like, whatever, let's go see what what's at the bottom of this. But seeing some of this uh, even more upfront and personal is going to be really interesting. Yeah, uh, great session. I um, had a really good time. Uh, I, I 
there's a number of things I really enjoyed, the really specific things uh, that I'll try to remember them all. Um, I I loved the little like uh, how much worse can it get speech that James gave to Father Samuel when talking about the seance. I thought that was really great. Um, the seance, the idea of having the seance was really, really good. Um, that was just really terrific. Um, I really, I, I really like the characterization of Father Samuel a lot. Um, it's, I, I think that these games work best when you have characters that are like behaving, they're scared, you know, that like, this is a terrifying situation and everyone's generally doing a good job of that. But Father Samuel is like that, is just playing this really classic, like, like he's not just scared of like, it's not just like the mortal death. There's also clearly something spiritual going on with Father Samuel that Father Samuel is worried about. And, and I like that. I think that all comes out really great. I particularly like the little, like the way you described, like jumping back from the trap door when you heard the sound. I thought that was really great. Um, yeah. And uh, like, like folks said about uh, the, 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 the great war flashback with Norbert was terrific. Um, just, just really, really liked that a lot. And um, the, uh yeah i also the second the, the characterization of norbert's really great everyone's doing a great job with characterization i mean these characters are really believable they are such good lovecraftian mythos characters like they just slot nicely into like you know sort of mythos type protagonists and so i'm really enjoying that a lot and my wish is i just i uh i'm really curious to see how much more of this you're gonna see where you're gonna go you do have a few big kind of set pieces that have been laid out there and I'm curious which ones or possibly all of them are you going to be able to see them we'll see. Um, I'm in a very immediate term i'm curious what father Samuel's going to do with the sheriff <laughs> and, uh, and and so that's that's intriguing. Uh, yeah um, and i'm yeah I'm just i'm just i'm just really excited to to wrap we, we are definitely ramping up the tensions ramping up scares are ramping up we're clearly about to tip over to the edge and uh and i think uh we have a really great ending to look forward to and i'm excited for it so um any other stars or wishes okay well thank you all so much i will see you tomorrow let's wave goodbye to the folks